especially with COVID, like I've shot a lot more at home and a lot more still life stuff and, and tried to really make the most of the opportunities of, of what I'm shooting and how I'm shooting it so that I can fit in time with him as well. Like we're, we're emerging into this new world of having a three-year-old and getting the old world back of independence yeah. and, and work-life balance. And, Maybe um, a couple of birthday parties in there as well. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's as much as it feels like the same shit, I feel like then this year is sort of the first year where we're back to normal. Yeah. What led me to photography was a bit of an icky guy moment of of realizing what I was good at and um, what I felt was my vocation and and pulling all those things together and and I think photography is a in a way a madness that you the way you see things um, and the way you translate light and composition and and a number of different things for me photography is my way of um, talking. You know, I think if you go back through anyone's CV, the stuff that they did 10 years ago would make them cringe today. And, and I think <laughs> if you can look back and, and go from that, I improved. And from this, I got to there. And from that, I do. I, and I think it's a, it's a evolving snowball of, of programs. Wow. So I've got this amazing library of, of books that my dad's given me. And he writes a handwritten note in the front of all of them. So Annie Leibovitz and in and, and all of her books and, and she essentially saw herself as a photojournalist but dabbled in, in fashion and, and I, her lighting techniques and the way that, that she approaches subjects, whether it be studio or outdoors, has played a large role in, in how I think about stuff. Mm. Um, Mark Seliger, who does a lot of Rolling Stone stuff as well, like I think a lot of those early magazine photographers um, or editorial magazine photographers really set a stage for where we are today. It's funny that I talk about them, but they talk about, you know, your Irving Pens and yeah. your Helmut Newton. And, and, yeah. and it's just sort of this evolution of, of inspiration. And um, I think for me, like looking at that stuff and knowing where, where we've come from gives you perspective about where you can go and knowing the rules or knowing how to break the rules gives you some cultural context to what you're delivering. Be like you've got your Stephen Dupont, you've got your Jonathan Mays, which is like your advertising photographers. And um, and I think a lot of them from a, from a, or Hugh Stewart as well, who's amazing. And they sort of set like a really beautiful precedent for the level in, in Australia, but then, um, Photojournalistically, you've got your James Brickwoods, you've got your internationals like Lindsay Adario, who yeah. are currently in the Ukraine shooting the conflict over there. And, and her books are incredible as well. And, and I think we all should be very thankful for these people that have bared witness to, to beauty and to tragedy at the same time to give us a sense of, of living history or modern history. Mm. Not to quote Matthew McConaughey, but like, where do I want to be in 10 years time? I want to be myself, but a better version of myself. And, and I think the one person that stops you from doing that is yourself. Um, saying about what other people have done creatively and commercially gives me a sense of the level that I need to deliver. Um, and then building on that so that at the moment, I'm honoured that I get put forward for jobs with people whose work I look up to that, you know, sometimes I get the job and sometimes I don't, but to be in that sphere and that realm for me is really humbling. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and your beautiful perspective on not only your work, but on life. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.